You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. We present The Tenth Rose Plant by John Fryer with Lucy Ailey Parker and John Hines. There you go. (laughs) You're all starting to come into your own, aren't you? That's the way. Standing up strong and true. Enjoying the sun on your petals. Feel its strength. Oh, you'll soon be in bloom. Oh, dear, oh, dear. What's happened to you? Something's been hanging around here after dark. Was it a fox? Might be these days. Probably next door's cat. He's new, you see. Moved in only the other day. He hasn't yet learnt the rules. He's only young. Not much beyond a kitten. But like everyone that's inexperienced, he thinks he knows it all. (laughs) I suppose we all did when we were kittens. I'm sure he meant no harm. I'll have a word with him on the quiet, shall we say. He won't be doing it again. Oh, just put this bit of dowling down by your side. That's it. And a little cotton to help you stand upright. We all need that sometimes. A little help to help us stay upright. We can't all do it on our own. Ah, there, you see. We all need a little help. There's no shame in asking. Now, don't you all look beautiful? Oh, you continue to bloom every year. Robert, Michael, Joseph, (laughs) all of you. Three here, three there. Three sets of bushes all in a line. Here, let me just give you something to drink. Now, I know it comes from heaven, but kindness costs me nothing. I do so like to do it. And we all need a little kindness, don't we? There's too much cruelty in the world. And we can all be cruel when we have to be. The trick is to be gentle when we can. There you are. Just a little on the leaves. And make room, all of you, here's another friend for you all. Same colour petals. Don't know the name yet. But we'll all learn soon enough, I'm sure. It's a beautiful day. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm sorry, were you talking to me? Yes. Yes, I was. Oh. Is everything all right? Everything's fine. Oh, then that's all right. Well, thank you. Have a nice day. Wait, don't go. So there is a problem? No, there's no problem. That's good to know, so I won't bother you anymore. Wait, I haven't asked you anything yet. I'm your new neighbour. Oh, hello. I'm Rosemary. Well, Rose. Ros, mostly. It's what people call me. Family, friends, people like that. Uh, uh, George. Nice to meet you, George. And you? Well, good day. It's going to be a nice day. Yes, yes, it is. Your garden's coming on. It looks... Yes? I don't... Glorious. Beautiful, I suppose. Thank you. I've done my best with what I have. Was it like this when you moved in? Oh, no. No, I'm afraid it wasn't. The previous owners let it all go a bit, you see. No, there were no flower beds, no rockery, and certainly no little stream. The water feature is very pretty. Thank you. I have to turn it off in the winter in case the plumbing stops. Plumbing can be a problem for us all. What? Oh, yes. (laughs) No, what what I meant was the motor in the pump is only small, not very powerful. The pipe can get blocked by falling leaves in the autumn or freeze in the winter got quite a selection of flowers. Thank you. There's fuchsias, pansies, daffodils. Even some rose bushes? Yes. So, the people that lived here before weren't interested in the garden? 
It was just a wasteland, a very small wasteland, I have to say, but a wasteland all the same. I don't think living things were of much interest to them. Much more into television, computer games and music. <laughs> they were into the rock and roll scene, I believe. Right. You weren't? Weren't? Into music. Well, plants like it. You play it to them? I sometimes Ros, yes. Well, what I mean is I bring my old tape recorder out here and listen to some classical tunes while I potter about in my garden. Tell myself that the plants like it, that soothes them. Well, maybe it does. Maybe they dislike it. Who knows? Perhaps they're not even aware of it. Who could say? Well, anyway, it was lovely to meet you, Rose. Ros, I, I won't detain you any further. I really must get on. We've moved down. Huh? Well? Pete. That's my other half. He's been working as a boiler engineer. You know, boilers and stuff. For hot water? Yes. Anyway, the work's dried up. <laughs> water? Dry? Yes, I get it. So I said, let's try the south. I see. I'm from here originally, but Pete's... he's from... The north? Yes. And does he like it here? I don't know. You haven't asked him? He's out. Oh. Looking for work. No, there's a recession on. It's been in the papers. Yes, I know. Perhaps you could ask him when he returns. Ask him? Does he like it here? Pete, yes. Well, I hope you'll both be very... Does my accent sound northern? Not really. I don't think you've picked up much of an accent. Ta. Ah. So I'll be... Where are you from? I'm from the city. A true cockney? No. No, just outside, actually. How did you end up here? It's a long story. I've got all day. Don't you have to work? It's my day off. So, then you have a job. I'm looking at the moment. I see. It's nice here, isn't it? I've always liked it. Been here long? Mm, over 50 years. What did you do? I'm sorry, that was a bit presumptuous of me. You are retired, aren't you? Yes, I am. I thought you might be. You thought right. I'm like that. Like what? A sort of a sixth sense kind of thing. You understand what I mean? Not exactly. I know things about people. Do you? Oh, yes. Like when we were up north, we had this neighbour, Mrs Turnbull, and she would often tell us that the post hadn't arrived when it had. I, uh... She hung around outside each morning for the postman to arrive. I think she fancied him, you see. And when he did finally turn up, she would tell him that we were out, even though we weren't. <sighs> Shocking. But later, after she left, because apparently she hadn't been keeping up on the payments, and, and when the bailiffs arrived and forced her out, they found all these old letters that she kept. Postcards, parcels, small deliveries, even utility bills. I don't mind so much about those, if I'm honest. But one of those had been a letter from my sister. She lives in Australia, near Perth. Have you ever been to Australia? Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, it's lovely. And she, her name's Catherine, by the way. Oh. She always sends her letters with fair dinkum written on the envelope. Does she? Oh, yes, she does. So you can imagine how I felt. Uh, well. Knowing that cow had been stealing our mail. Yes, I can see. All the time we were there, she had, in effect, been as nice as pie to our faces while going behind our backs. She had been living... What's the expression? Oh, I don't know. You know, when someone is doing two things, showing two sides of themselves. I'm not sure that... Going behind people's backs? Um... Two-faced? That's one possibility. Underhand? You could say... Living a lie. Could be. Anyway, that's what she was doing. And... And do you know what she was doing with all those letters and stuff? I'm afraid I She was don't. reassembling all of our lives. Was she? Yes. 
with some addresses and names. It's amazing what you can find out. And then there's always the internet. Do you use the internet? No, I can't say I do. It'll be good for all your plants. You could research all sorts of things about them. That is most kind of you to suggest. You could find out what they like, what they don't, what to do for them in the future, and what they were like in the past. After all, we all have pasts, don't we? Yes. Well, enjoy your day. So what did you do when you were working? Nothing very important. I'm sure your employer didn't think so. I was very junior. I doubt they would even remember me. I suppose we all think that no one notices us, that we're so small in the grand design that we just fade into the background. We don't. Someone always sees us. Sees us for what we are, for what we are at this very moment. Wow, that sounds deep, don't you think? I really wouldn't like to say. We're also seeing what we were before. Before what? Whatever we were in the past. Which was? You were about to tell me. I worked as a gardener. I'm now retired, as you guessed, but I do enjoy my garden and I very much enjoy tending to my plants. Less troublesome than people? Yes. You worked as a gardener? I assisted. You weren't the head gardener? I was never the ambitious type. More of a fetching and carrying type? I did what I could do. More of an outdoor kind of guy? I suppose you might say so. Not one to be stuck in an office? I was never for just sitting around. No desire to wear a shirt and tie? <laughs> no. Pen pushing was never my idea of a fulfilling life. No way to leave your mark. No one was ever complimented because of the way in which they filled out paperwork. Indeed. And there are more dramatic ways to be remembered. Possibly. Now, I must Can get I just on. ask? I must get on now, Ros. It's been lovely to meet you, and I wish you every success in finding some sort of employment, but I have several things that I must do around the house. So, if you'll be so kind What's as to your excuse surname? me... I'm sorry. Your surname... Mine's Jarvis. Actually, that's Pete's. Oh, what was your maiden name? Downing. Rosemary Charlotte Downing. Now Ros Jarvis. Pleased to meet you. Do you think women give up some of their identity when they get married? I'm sorry, I'm not quite... Identity? When people get married, the woman changes her name. That's not always the case these days now, is it, Ros? Do you think... People change, a little, I mean, with the changing of a name, or even a title. I wouldn't know, Ros. I, I don't have a title. I had a friend once called Emma James. Quite an ordinary, simple, maybe even a pleasant name, if you like. Then she got hitched to some fella called Smythe. And then started to, to adopt all these airs and graces. Odd, when in truth she was still only living in a two-up, two-down. Right. Well, I... My point, George, is that sometimes people change names and then it changes the way the rest of the world sees them.